My condolences, Toot. Toot says they almost just cut their thread without burying it first. Just a little short snip snip. Hello, Moon. Welcome in. Welcome in. Let me just turn down the music a little bit. How's that sound for everyone? As you guys can see, we're back in Spirit City. As we... Music is super quiet. Okay. I bumped it up a little bit. <laughs> yes, we did get the Hell Pupper. Um... I may have done you guys a slight fib in the schedule this week. I said that we'd still be unlocking spirits today. I've unlocked all of them. So no more spirits to unlock until the next content update. But I can show you all of the spirits now if you guys want. Um, and the change the vibe uh, redeem is still live. So if you want to change up what our little character is doing, change the um, environment that we're in, the background noises, you can do that. And if you are watching this on YouTube and you want to change the vibes, just let Toot know and uh, they will take care of it. <laughs> Toot has redeemed change the vibes. We're going to do rumbly thunder in the brain. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Fossabot. I'm going to have to do some adjustments there. All right. So we're going to do some rumbly thunder. Did you want some rain as well? Nope, just the thumber. Th thumber. Thumber. Rat. And uh, let me show you guys. So yes, we did get the little heck puppy. Um, so this is our completed spirit decks now. Ooh, another redeem there. And thank you for the hydrate moon. It is a rainless storm in this lovely afternoon. It's fine. Thanks for the hydrate. Let me just do that real quick. Um, so if I go over here to Spirit Companion, so there you can get a better look at the heck puppy. He's actually got a pentagram on his head. He's so cute. I love him so many. He is just precious. Um, and as you can see, I have a lot of spirit credits and I'm also level 26. So yeah, I can, I can buy a lot of things. Um... But yeah, I've been hanging out with the heck puppy. Uh, the dust bunny is also a favorite. With the little rainbow skin. Love dust bunny. And of course, I think my absolute favorite spirit, like even more than arachnid, is Vutudu. This is Vutudu. Vutudu is the spirit of um, undone, unfinished tasks which cause stress and disorganization and the way that you defeat Vutudu or calm it and make it friendly is you stick post-it note to its head and then it becomes your little friend reminding you to take breaks and it has lots of cool colors I like this one because it's got the little like heart patch broken heart patch and the little patch on the back of its head and it's green which is my favorite color but this one this one reminds me of Toot this is like the little Toot to do voot voot toot do so when i want to hang out with toot i will make this my companion see we chillin i give a pet i give a little pet So 
So yes, welcome everyone. She says, I had it going while playing Stardew the other day and it kept randomly turning on pink noise and your confusion was strong. Yeah, I, it doesn't ha technically have controller support, but I've found that controllers do control it. So if I'm using my controller for something else, it'll make things happen in Spirit City. Um, I was super confused and I realized like an hour after you told me that it was doing random things in Spirit City, that that was probably what was going on and then completely forgot to mention it to you. So, sorry. But I had that happen when I was playing the, um, uh, when I was doing playing the demo. Because I would have the demo going and then we would play uh, Pal World. And uh, yeah, I would like all of a sudden get pop-ups about the Spirit City Discord and the wish list us on Steam. And I'm like, what? What is happening? But yes, welcome everyone. I'm so glad you guys are here. It is Friday night. We are chilling. It has been a super rainy day today here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to get cozy, do some crafting. I've actually done not a ton of crafting today, so looking forward to that. Dude says you ran Spirit City and Pal World at the same time and your computer didn't explode. Apparently not, although it doesn't like running two Steam games at the same time because we were running Pal World through Xbox. Anna, hey, welcome in. I'm so glad to see you. Welcome, welcome. We are chilling in Spirit City. I'm actually going to uh, bring up my cross stitch. There we go. Um, we've got Spirit City running in the background. And yeah. We're just going to chill. Do some cross stitch. I'm working on my frog child here uh, as you can see I'm almost done with what's in the frame and then I just so they're missing their legs which actually aren't very large like they're, they're only about that big and then this hand um, I need to do as well so I'm going to do everything that's in the frame and then and then think about moving it well and then I have to move it but I'm having a crisis as to which way to move it. Diagonal. Just do this leg over here. I'm also using this glow in the dark thread. Which is, like, I've said it before, it's not a nightmare to work with. It's just not easy to work with. And it's it's driving me a little bit nuts. But I'm, I'm getting there. I, I don't have a super amount left to do. Yes, Toot, thanks for that. Um, we are not going to do our regular tree eat for Pal. Um, Pal is also having a bit of a cozy day. Uh, she hasn't been out of her hide much, so you might not see her wandering around too much. Um, but uh, we're not going to do a tree eat for her. But if you do want to see some of the cats, you can redeem for a cat summons, which means I just shake treats on my lap and um, am pretty much immediately swarmed.
and other redeems we have going on um, is do the thing, which is make me do a crafting thing or a spirit city thing. Um, change the vibe, which changes the spirit city vibes. And hydrate, of course. I don't know what I have done. It's just like the way I would describe it working with this thread. It's like every slight annoyance that happens working with normal thread happens all of the time with this thread. You're just in a constant state of slight annoyance. This is um, DMC Light Effects E940, Glow in the Dark. Um, so it's not cotton, it's like some kind of rayon or acrylic. And it glows in the dark. But now I kind of see why Heather recommends uh, Krynek instead of the DMC. What I found helpful working with it um, is to sometimes take the needle off and just kind of like smooth the thread out through my fingers. Like not even do the dangle and spin because the other thing about it is that the needle slips off the thread really easily. So the dangle and spin is just going to lose you your needle real quick. And the pattern I'm working on is a frog skeleton from Raven Stitchcraft on Etsy. And uh Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting pretty far along on it. I did have a little bit of a crisis on this pattern the other day. Uh because you know when you're like too close to something and you've been staring at something and all you can see is the mistakes and the bad parts? That definitely happened to me with this um, because I'm using this variegated thread for the, the frog um, and it's it's shades of purple and like a light gray and yellow and a light yellow uh, and then the glow in the dark is of course white <laughs> hi Mush welcome in welcome in yes we are working on my skeleton froggy um so if you look at some of the areas where the white meets the variegated, if it's a light section of the variegated, that like especially right here, the 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 kind of demarcation between the two colors is very blurred, especially like I find around the ribs, the ribs are really hard to make out. Um so I I got really frustrated and I went and I put it down and I walked away and I was like, I don't know if I want to keep working on it um, because I really love the effect of the variegated thread. So I picked it up to gave me some great advice. Um, so I went back, I picked it up again. What I'm going to do is I have 550, which is my favorite shade of purple. Um, and I'm just gonna outline the the skeleton. Like the, the parts that aren't already the dark purple, I'm just going to stitch over. I'm not gonna frog because at this point, I think frogging those stitches would, I would have to cut the threads, which means everything around it would unravel. And I just, I'd have to start over from the beginning. So I'm just gonna stitch over the threads. 
um, and since I already have kind of blended variegated threads in it, I don't think it'll be, it, I don't think it'll stand out a lot. Like it'll stand out in a color contrast way, but not in a bad way. <laughs> I love those frog emotes too. That's what Spirit City needs, is a frog, uh, companion. The playlist I'm listening to, by the way, in the game is Chilling with the Unknown. Uh, it's my favorite, I think, of the four playlists. I mean, they're all good. So yes, Anna asked if Moon is stitching as well. If you guys are working on any projects while you're hanging out with me, please let me know. Let us all know. We wish to know. We wish to know all the things. Dude, I'm in the middle of the stream. I'll feed you later. Haha, I did a funny. <laughs> yeah, she started a, an Audrey 2 piece on the day of the eclipse and it looks so good like it just it looks so crisp and sharp I'm, I, I love it I was actually thinking of maybe starting a new piece on stream tonight but I gridded up the fabric and realized that the fabric is just slightly too small it's not slightly too small. It's much too small. Um, I have like less than half an inch clearance on each side. So um, that's not going to happen. Anna has started a new pair of tiny socks doing the rye socks this time in DK. Okay, yeah. Uh, rye by Tin Can Knits. It's, um, it's their, like, they have, they basically have a collection of, like, basic knits of every type. So you've got flax, which is a pullover. You've got harvest, which is a cardigan. Um, rye is the socks. Barley is the hat. And I, there's some other grain that's the scarf. And then some other grain is the mittens. Um, but uh, great pattern. I've used them several times. I uh, was actually thinking of making myself a pair of house socks in worsted. Um, because I have lost one pair of house socks. I gave one pair away and then another pair kind of shrank in the wash and then I can't find one of the, the last pair so I need house socks but um, house socks aren't, cro aren't, aren't cross stitch there is only cross stitch cross stitch cross stitch Crustage. Mush started a yarn cozy today. Got bored working on your tea, but didn't have brain for your shawl. Yeah, that uh, that tracks. Yarn cozies um are such a great little project because you can do them as plain or as fancy as you want them to, and they're actually practical. Um, I like using yarn cozies when I have a cake of sock yarn. Um, which I don't 
I don't always cake my my sock yarn, but if I'm doing like something that has that has stripes or a color gradient in it, I like to cake it rather than ball it um, because then I can see where the the color changes are. This is why everyone needs multiple projects going on because if you get bored of one, you can move to another one. Uh, Anna, are you using the Tin Can Knits app for your socks, or are you uh, just using the PDF pattern? Um, I'm really curious about their app. So Tin Can Knits is a is a design team that does um, really accessible knitting patterns in a variety of sizes. Oh, you are using the app. Awesome. Uh, you'll have to let me know how you find it. It's good? Yeah. So they released an app and loaded it with their free patterns and some of their paid patterns. And the thing with the app is you plug in what size you're doing and then it'll walk you through the pattern step by step only for that size, which if you have knitted a, a pattern with multiple sizes, sometimes the numbers can get confusing as to like which, which count you're supposed to do. So the app will walk you through just the instructions for your size. And I've heard that there's like videos and tutorials and things like that. Makes it so much easier, I bet. So yeah, next time I'm doing a Tin Can Knits pattern, I'll probably try and do it through the app. The problem is with the their free patterns. I, I can basically wing those at this point. <laughs> but I am definitely eyeing a couple of the strange brew patterns. Your brain Anna says my brain feels like oatmeal. I'm so sorry, Anna. I know you guys have been getting the storms too. I I that probably isn't helping. And it's been a long week, but it's the weekend. We can rest. We can recover. Thank you for the hydrate moon. Anna says this week felt so long. It felt really long and also really short for me. Like yesterday, I thought it was Tuesday. I just don't know what day of the week it is at all times. Aw, that's cute. Yes, Anna and Moon work together. Which is how we know each other. Having Moon for a co-worker would be fantastic. Having Anna for a co-worker would be fantastic. I bet Moon is currently cleaning her condo and flailing at us saying nice things. I've been I've been a terrible influence and I've gotten Moon to start multiple projects at the same time. Musha's, I like the concept of the app, but you haven't tried it yet because you always mix sizes for a good fit for yourself. Yeah, there's there is that as well. Um having to change what size of which portion you're doing. Um, would of course mess that up. Um, I know for myself when I'm 
working on a sweater, sometimes most of the time I have to do the largest size anyways, but sometimes I'll have to do um, one of the largest sizes for the chest and then the largest size for the arms. So yeah, I get that. I think for, for people who are newer knitters, which is what the app is really aimed at, um, or people who haven't done like a garment before, uh, then being able to do it just without having to make those calculations on your own is really helpful. But if you are modifying it, then the, the helpfulness of the app is lessened. But yeah, since I've got a couple of uh, round yoke color work sweaters on my list, um, I've been eyeing getting the strange brew pattern. Um, which is just, it's, it's a collection of patterns, but it's also a template for you to create your own top-down uh, round yoke color work cardigan or pullover. And of course, because it's tin can knits, it's like super easy to follow along. Which brings up another point. I was just saying how um, I've convinced Moon to work on multiple projects at the same time. So Moon and I are both big enjoyers of floss tube videos, which is just people posting about making little videos about uh, what they're working on, what their plans are, that kind of thing. And, you know, some people have multiple whips. Some people have more than 90 whips. Um, and some some of these whips are massive, like massive. There was one we were watching. She had finished thirty six thousand stitches, and that was seventeen percent of the total project. Thirty six thousand stitches. For context, this entire piece, when I'm finished, it will be about nine thousand stitches. Oh yes, uh, Anna. Someone I follow has 92 whips. Cross stitch whips. They also knit. I, I don't know if they've posted a knit count. Um, but like stuff like that. It's not so much that it's the size that intimidates me. It's the fact that you're committing to this, to doing this for years. This project is going to take years to do and my brain just doesn't work like that like I know that in six months I'll be knitting most of the time instead of cross stitching again I know and that's fine and things are cyclical so I'm not committing to projects that are going to take me years to do I say as I am about to start my first full coverage piece but it's only eight by ten it's not it's not gigantic um And I'm like, is this is this is this what it means to be neurotypical? Butterfly meme. When you can actually make plans for what you're gonna be interested in in years from now. <laughs> Anna asked, do they sleep? I honestly don't know. And like some of these floss tubers and knitting podcasts, I'm sure you've noticed have done the same. Um, but they'll post like, I made six sweaters. Oh, welcome in Pyro. Welcome in. Thank you for the uh, change the vibes. So we're going to make it nighttime. <laughs> How are you doing Pyro? How was your week? Let's move over to the uh, window so we can enjoy the evening. 
the night time, I should say. Oh. You can just barely see the moon because it's so thundery out. Yeah, long week. I that 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 so far seems to be the vibe. Remember to hydrate, Pyro. Um, what was I saying? Yes. Uh, when you're watching these floss tubes and these knitting things, they're like, I made six sweaters and finished this Mirabilia piece, and ran a half marathon through New York and then I read six books and it's like when when did you read the six books Mush says I mean you can start a project for the sake of being of enjoying the work and be okay with the fact that it might never get finished yeah absolutely all right, Pyro, thank you so much for the lurk. I hope you enjoy the vibes with us. We're just going to be cozy, chill, working on some projects. And I think that's the vibe that I'm getting in a lot of the cross-stitch online community, the like the floss tube community, um, is that... Starting a project for the vibes of it is much more common. That's why you have two fleeces in this insane knitting project. Yup. I know, sometimes you just want to work on stuff and it's not stuff you have currently on the needles or on the frame or on the hook. So close to finishing this shoulder blade. I am I am very much a vibes crafter. Like I'll I'll start things cuz I want to be working on them. And I don't really mind if it's going to take a while to uh to come to fruition basically. All right, one shoulder blade done. Oh, thank you so much, Mush. Uh, they say uh, they love my thread choice for the frog. Yes, it's a variegated thread from DMC. It's called Purple Pansy, but um, it's 100% NB colors. And then this white thread is actually not white. It's glow in the dark. So the skeleton will glow in the dark. but it's, it matches so well with uh, the white floss that I use as well. Um, I've got a pretty cool Phasmo design that's gonna take advantage of the fact that it looks white in the light and then glows in the dark, in the dark. I am planning a shop update for next week. Um, at the moment, there will be three new patterns I am hoping to add another four to that, so seven total. Um, because if you guys don't know, next weekend is uh, 24 hours of cross stitch. Focus, camera, focus. Thank you. Uh, next weekend is the 24 hours of cross stitch, which is it's a cross stitching marathon 
but it's not stitch for 24 hours straight without sleeping. It's try and get 24 hours of cross stitch in over the course of the weekend. So Friday to Sunday. Uh, so we're going to be doing a special stream next Friday evening. Uh, time is still TBD. Got to work that out. But it's going to be a very cool stream. We're going to have some giveaways. Um, we are celebrating not only 24 hours of cross stitch, but uh, we are celebrating my birthday and my one year streaming anniversary, both of which are coming up next week. So that's going to be so much fun. Um, one of the things we're going to be giving away is actually a copy of Spirit City, the game that I'm playing. It took me way too long to figure out that Toot was trying to fix, to do an acronym for TBD. Public displays of defection. Yes. Um, I was in the middle of saying something about Spirit City. I'm we're giving away a copy of Spirit City. Um, if you want to know more about the game, which is the, the background vibes that we got going on, I'm actually just going to turn off the UI. Um, you can use the command exclamation point Spirit City in the chat and uh, you'll get some info there. Thank you, too. But yes, if you miss Monday's stream about Spirit City, um, it is technically a Vigi game. Um, but it was, uh, but it's more of a productivity suite, I guess. It creates this lo-fi environment for you that you can completely customize. And then as you're working through your day using the built-in checklist and the timers and the habit tracker, um, you level up, gain experience, you meet new spirits, um, and you can unlock more, uh, stuff for your room. <laughs> Toot does have a slight advantage in that there is a delay between the recording and the streaming um, and she can hear me because she's sitting like four feet away from me thank you for the hydrate moon I am hydrating this evening with a uh, a, a cherry limeade diet bepsis which is a can of, well, uh, Pepsi Zero Sugar Lime and Pepsi Zero Sugar Wild Cherry mixed together. It's amazing. As well as good old ginger ale. So I hope you guys are all hydrating with me. Toot says they have iced tea and mango raspberry lemonade. That sounds delicious. The, Anna, are you talking about the cherry lime? Cherry lime made Bepsis. It's so good. Yeah, cherry lime is my favorite flavor too. It's really good. I don't, I don't know. So, I'm a, I'm a Bepsis stan. We know this. Pepsi, Pepsi stan. Um. But the the Pepsi Wild Cherry is just better than the Cherry Coke. It just is. Like I don't know what it is about it, but it's just, it's just built different.
So I do a loop start. I've been converted from a buried start. Um, but it actually works out because my because to do a loop start, you cut the thread twice as long as what you actually want to work with, and then you fold it in half. Um, and Toot just works with really stupidly long threads. So my doubled up threads are the same length as her regular threads. We'd win. Oh, Anna, we got from the grocery store. Uh, I think it was Real Canadian Superstore. We got cher sour cherry lime can, like, um, sour cherry lime gummy, like, gummies, gummy rings. Oh, strawberry lime. Never mind. They were still really, really good. They were delicious. It's just unfortunate that they were from um, Real Canadian Superstore. <laughs> Anna knows what's up. Yeah. If anyone's watching from outside of Canada, um, one of our grocery store chains, of which Real Canadian Superstore is one, is um, really shady and sketchy. And the former CEO, Galen Weston, is a bit of a scumbag. And everybody knows his name because he's a bit of a scumbag. Toot says, as is Mr. Banks, who replaced Galen Weston. And yeah, the Sobies aren't that much better, but... I mean, the Sobies have always been sketch. It's just in different ways. I mean, Sobies prices have always been ridiculous, but uh, the Sobies family themselves have been not the greatest. Oops, sorry, I whacked into the mic there. Yeah, Toot says the grocery options in Canada are not great right now. Nope, they are not. Nope, they are not. Toot spitting straight facts tonight. No such thing as an ethical billionaire. Yep. Thank you for the cat summons, too. All right, we're going to do a cat summons, lighten things up a little bit.
Bella, babies. Oh, hey, here's a baby standing directly on my cross stitch frame. Come here. You have to come over here into the camera. Because father cannot move the camera. Thanks. Come here. Thanks. Thanks. There you go. They're right there. You just have to come and get them. You can see dainty little feet. There we go. Binks has got some treats. Oh, Binks is running. Bella. Eco, Gigi. Can I get anybody else? Anybody at all? Eco. You guys have to come here directly into the square in order to get treats. Look, there's treats. All nice and lined up. You need only come get them. Come on. Yeah. We got a Pico. We have a Pico. You want one more? Ow. Alright, no. You you just ate like six treats and and bit my finger. <laughs> my fingers taste like treats now. All right, this is my life now. Okay, bye, Pico. There's no... I have nothing. See, look. It did taste too much like human towards the end. Uh, the consequences of my actions. Look, my fabric is no longer tight. Thanks. Stood upon it. But yes, that was Pico. Pico is our good orange baby. Moon was delivering a TED Talk on cat genetics last night on her stream. It was quite interesting. Um, and one fun fact about orange kitters is that ginger tabbies are like 99.9% .9 male. Uh, but Pico is... Oh, 80%. That's less. Um, but Pico is, of course, female. Um, but uh, to the point that people online always try to tell us that Pico is male. And it's like, hmm, pretty sure... Pretty sure they took some stuff out that she wouldn't have if she was male. But go off. Well, that's a giant knot. <coughs> 99 point... 99.9% uh, is 20s. Oh, so that's the percentage for male 20s. 
and then 80% is the percentage for female orange tabby. Gotcha. It says instructions unclear. Cross stitch stuck in poster. No cross stitch stuck in poster. Oh no. No, no. Binx is still here. She might, she might show up. She's, she's crouched just right there. Um, in her usual crouching spot. Uh, Binx likes to curl up on my desk. And she'll curl up, like, on my desk immediately in front of me, in front of my monitor. Um, when Moon is streaming, she will watch her Auntie Moon. Um, it's very cute. Binks does not wish to be famous, just maybe a little famous. Yes. Thank you, Toot, for that. No famous, only famous. Iconic everywhere. Ready to attack. Um. But yes, if you didn't know, uh, Moon Phased is also a streamer here on Twitch. Um, she does mostly competitive games like Valorant and Lethal Company, um, but manages to make them cozy and inviting and welcoming. Um, Valorant with Moon is honestly one of my favorite times of the week. I don't play Valorant. I'm not good at shooting games. I'm not, and I don't particularly enjoy competitive games. But Valorant has become one of my special interests and one of my favorite games just from watching Moon. Um, and very exciting. She's already announced this in her server, so I can talk about it now. Uh, April 20th, she's going to be doing a cross-stitch stream for 24 hours of cross-stitch. Um, so Moon, if you have any details about that you want to share, please go ahead. Uh, but I will be hanging out with her that Saturday the 20th for 24 hours of cross-stitch. That she's not doing a 24 hour stream um, and then I'm going to be streaming on the 19th for 24 hours of cross stitch so we just need someone else from our shared community to stream on Sunday and you guys will be covered maybe we'll get Toot to stream on Sunday it'll be just two hours of total silence and every now and then Someone yells at you to hydrate. Oh yeah, Stardew Sunday. Moon plays Stardew on Sundays. Stardew Sunday. <laughs> Silence and or swears. I was doing... Um, I was sewing something up. I was I was filming something at my desk that was like a top-down tutorial. Um and I was I was filming the bit that I was uh that I was just gonna speed up and put music over. Um so Toot and I were talking and I caught her on camera saying, Did you do a little swear? And I did. And I said yes in my mind. She goes, A mind swear? It was really cute, but I'm not gonna put it in the video because uh, Toot is imperce imperceptible. Uh, all right. Some details from Moon about her 24 hours of cross stitch. We'll begin at 8 p.m. That's Eastern. And she's going to do a little giveaway to celebrate 24 hours of cross stitch. Awesome. I am so excited. And you usually go until like 11 ish, right? Yeah, Toot will do me a harm. Yes, so 8 to 11-ish Eastern on Moon's channel. 
on Saturday, April 20th. It's going to be another wonderful cross-stitch stream. And if you are a cross-stitcher yourself, um, that weekend might be a good time to kind of check it out and pick it up because a lot of people are going to be doing special events, special videos, um, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, Toot and I both learned when we were quite young. Um, and then Toot retaught me after we got married. And then we inducted Moon into the cult about six months ago. Of course, Moon, no problem. No problem for the promo. And I find that cross stitch, especially compared to knitting, has a much lower barrier of entry in terms of material cost as well as just technical skill. Has it really been more than, oh yeah, wow, July. And I find with cross stitch nowadays, because I've I've given this spiel before, but um, I learned how to cross stitch when I was young. My mother did uh, needlepoint all when I was a kid, and she would work on the same project for ten years at a time because she never made she never had time to work on it. <laughs> um, but. Uh, so I've always kind of been around it, but it was always like precious moments and florals and um, fancy ladies. Uh, and that was the case right up until like even in 2018 when I was doing a lot of it. It was still really hard to find kind of stuff that was outside that florals and fairies and dragons and that kind of vibe. Um, and then started getting back into it last year and discovered like a whole new world um, of really cool patterns and really cool stuff that people have been doing. Um, and Toot says, I always, always, always recommend picking up a kit for your first stitch. It's just easier. Yeah, that's very true. Um, if you don't want to order something online, you can always go to Michael's. They do have some small kits. Um, if you want to check out stitchwit.ca if you're in Canada. Um, she sells kits, which is awesome. And even if you go on Etsy, you can find kits for sale. <laughs> and uh, Moon says, getting started with Ada and a pattern with blocks of color is so beginner friendly. And then um, Toot is uh, promoing my Etsy store. So yes, if you want some fandom cross stitches that are on the smaller side, definitely check out my Etsy shop. I have uh, Five Nights at Freddy's and Valorant pieces, as well as a few non-fandom pieces. Um, there will be some Phasmophobia stitches going up next week in the next shop update. And um, I do try and keep my pieces on the smaller side so that they are more accessible for newer stitchers and also um, like a little bit quicker to do and a little bit more, um, I don't know. They're not as much of a time and space investment. Uh, so they're just little great ways to add to your collection. Um, you can make the, the FNAF portrait series that I've been working on. I really love those. Okay, most of them are on the smaller side. I do have one that's six inches tall by three feet long. Um, and then I have another one that's 11 by 11. Hello, Nifty. Welcome in. Uh, my name is DH. My pronouns are they, them. And uh, welcome to the stream. So be uh, mix cozy instead. MX. But yes, welcome in. Welcome in. Um, 
But yeah, I'm really proud of the uh, FNAF portraits and the Valorant agent series that I'm doing because those are just a couple of inches big. You could use them for embellishment on something else. You could use them on uh, just as ornaments. Um, I finished a couple of the the portraits that Toot had stitched up as just little like key fob keychain thingies. Actually, let me show you guys those. So these are from my um, Five Nights at Freddy's portrait collections. Welcome in, Kasha. Welcome in. Um, so this is Toy Bonnie. So you can see it's just quite small. It's only a couple of inches big. Uh, and I just finished this one really simply. I sewed it to some felt backing and uh, sewed on a little jump ring there so I can attach it to something else. Um, so I just did the same. So Toot actually went through and stitched a few of these. We've got the puppet. We've got Withered Chica. Um, of course, the iconic Freddy Fazbear. Anna says, I have to go pick up your boyfriend from the airport. Enjoy your evening. Have a great weekend. You as well, Anna. Have a great, tr uh, have a great weekend. Safe drive. Um, and thank you so much for dropping by. It was so good seeing you. And uh, definitely show us those socks when you're done. I want to see them. Um, I've got a little foxy. And oh, the I did mangle as well, but that's over in the craft supplies. Because uh, I'm going to turn it into a threader fob for two. So yeah, I mean... Like, you don't always have to finish things in a hoop um, or in a frame. You can just, you can do stuff like this. Like, even this, if I wanted to put them up, I could just, you know, put up a little hook and there they go. Uh, yeah, really nice and easy. Of course, I was complaining about it the entire time because it was, um, it was sewing, which I dislike. Just the... Moon says you're so intimidated by FFOing projects, to be honest. Oh, I'm so sorry. So FFO, um, if you're not in the cross-stitch world and don't use the, the shorthand, um, means a fully finished object. So like we consider a piece finished when you finish the stitching, but for in, in order for it to be fully finished, it has to be like ready to hang up basically or ready to gift or ready to do whatever. Um, Moon says it's so nice seeing creative ways to do it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love seeing different cool ways to to FFO things. Um, someone, Cross Stitch the Globe, did a really cute little. They found a frame. Possibot frequently objects. Thank you, Toot, for that alternate uh, explanation of FFO. Otherwise, fun foxy oboes. Uh, they found this really cool little frame at like a thrift store and then they took um, a much much larger Quaker sampler pattern and pulled a couple of the motifs so it would fit inside the small frame and that just looked really cool I like that I also love um, finishing like a box top with it so that might be a thing that I try doing I tried doing the uh, the top of the the mason jar mason jar lid thing, but I th I got my like dimensions off or something and it just did not look good. Moon says FFO also means friendly frog on looking. Yep. No, but why does that frog emote look like me?
the 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 frog note one. With the notebook and the pencil and it almost looks like he's wearing glasses like I can't quite tell if he is but but yes I also I love seeing the way people finish different projects um, I have one in the kitchen that I finished as like a scroll um, with the uh, the just like with a dowel over the top and then leaving the edges um, stitched but raw. So there's there's a ton of different ways to finish stuff. They don't have to all be the same. I have no idea how I'm going to finish the frog boy. Frog might go into the uh, bag of uh, finished but not FFO'd cross stitches for a while. <laughs> I feel like I'm so close. Like, I haven't actually checked my stitch count because what I did was I, I outlined everything first and now I've just been, been um, filling in. So I don't actually go through and tick off how many stitches I've done in pattern keeper until the end of the day so I have no idea like what my actual stitch count is at this point um but it, it this morning I was only 57% of the way through and I was like how could that be like I feel like I'm way more than 57% of the way so the legs must be larger than I think they are Moon says they keep their non FFO FOs in a binder. Yeah, that's good too. I have, um, it's actually one of the like uh, slightly heavier, um, heavier weight Ziplocs that the, um, that our Ada came, comes in. Um, that's what I use for the, FO, for the FOs. It's always misleading. A 10 by 10 square looks so small, but it's a hundred stitches. Yes, Moon, I agree. I was, I was, uh, gritting my fabric for my full coverage piece earlier today. And it was like a 10 by 10 square is so tiny, but it feels like it should, it should be a lot bigger, but it's so tiny. I can't, I can't imagine working on smaller count fabrics. I, um, I've i always worked on 14 count Ada. I've never worked on anything smaller. I've never worked on anything larger. I've just worked on 14 count Ada. Um, so I'm just, what I'm doing is I just took off the needle and I'm just kind of gently running it through my fingers to try and get some of the spin out of it. So this is the, the Ada that I gritted earlier today. Um, and I used a friction pen, which will disappear with heat. So as you can see, like I'm, I'm fine on this side for clearance, but the top and the bottom, I did not leave myself very much room at all. And like, I went over the math a bunch of times. So I'm like, oh, sure, feck it, it'll be grand. It was not grand. So I'm, I need to, 
get more Ada, basically. That's going to be actually the size I need it to be. Oh well. Oh well. It's it's white Ada, and so these lines will um, disappear as soon as I apply heat to it. So if I just run the iron over this, the, the lines will disappear. Um, but I might just leave it gridded because it's still a 10 by 10 grid that'll work for any future projects as well, even if it's a small one. So uh, I'm just going to leave it gridded until it's actually used. Um, it's, uh, I think the technical term for this is a fat 16. Um, it's a 12 by 18 piece of ADA. And it's just in white. <laughs> Moon says future you you have pre gridded Ada. Yep. Exactly. Future me has pre gridded Ada. Don't have to work at it. It's fine. Everything's fine. So yeah, I'm just going to finish this uh, shoulder blade and then I'm going to do so this little like section here is a, the, a start of the bone. So I'm, I'm just going to do this bit here because that's what's in this block. Um, and then when I move the frame, I don't have to worry about getting those stitches. And then I'm going to do the outlining. I don't think I'm going to get it all done tonight. I hope I'm going to get it all done tonight because um, I want to do some other crafts tomorrow. I've got uh, some needle minder stuff I want to uh, experiment with. I'm very excited. Needle minders are these um, magnetic doohickeys. They hold your needle. And uh, I like making them. It's fun. Everybody make sure you're hydrating with me, please. So it's Friday. We made it through a long, long week. Anybody have any exciting weekend plans? Or even just cozy, chill weekend plans? I'm going to be um, doing some assorted crafting tomorrow uh, I kind of like classify it when it's not when it's not cross stitch and it's not knitting and it's not like a specific craft it's just like generally making stuff it just it's assorted crafting um, and then Sunday I'm going to be watching moon play stardew of course Although, to be honest, I'm probably going to be spending a lot of the weekend watching Toot play Stardew as well. Because we peer pressured her into starting a new run. Which, if you're in the Discord, you'll get all of the updates on the new run. It's hilarious. She's doing a Joja run and has... <laughs> has uh, completely committed to the bit. Yes, we bullied you into doing another Stardew run.
and it worked and I will not apologize for that. Well, earlier today, she was on Summer 21 and had already unlocked two, uh, three-fifths of the warehouse. Thanks, Moon, for triggering the acronym of the day. If you want to play the acronym game, um, you can figure out uh, an alternate... Shutting down. Uh, figure out an alternate explanation for the acronym Lo-Fi. <laughs> and Toot says they are on Fall 8 and finish the warehouse. Lo-Fi. Leisurely emitting freaky info. Laugh, object, freak, in terror. Moon, I felt that one, the leisurely emitting freaky info. That's when you just info dump on your favorite weird subject. Lublick O oh, fish plays of if <laughs> committing ominous fear inducers <laughs> and toot with an actual gif of me. Look out from inside. It's not ominous at all. Moon says lame omniscient frog in it. Ah, yes, the great omniscient frog. He knows all, but does nothing about it. Stop pulling off the needle. Other friends insinuate. My brain just went, leave out Ferris Ixide. I don't, I don't know why. Love otters, parrot, ick. Light opens, freakish intelligence. Dun dun dun. Uh. That's a good one, too. <laughs> mm. 
living openly for implosion. Left open. Fire ignite. Luminous object finds immortality. Ah, That's Moon saying that they're going to be immortal. <laughs> Moon says, why do mine all sound like they're about aliens? Because they are all about aliens. Everything is about aliens. Ancient aliens. Dude says, lost otherness. Follower insight? Laugh. Oh, frown. I can't read that last word. In... I have to admit, the I'm on season five of Ancient Aliens. And there have been some real bangers in this season. Crystal Skull one. That was good. There was one in, I think, season four called uh, The Secrets of the Tombs. That was actually really fascinating because it, it was about funerary practices around the world. Um, which, you know, once you take out the ancient aliens part is still super interesting. Lady on Nomlet feasts on infants. <laughs> uh, thanks for that, Kasha. You have been watching some uh, snake discovery. Yeah, I think Kasha wins with the snake discovery reference. Man, I am too cozy with this thunder going on. It's so... I love I love this game and the soundscapes it creates. So I'm going to try and get my frog son done sooner rather than later. Um, and then... Because I have... He's about 6,000 stitches altogether and I'm about, about 4,000. Um, so it wouldn't take very long to finish him. Um, so I think... And I've, ar and I've already finished my other April whip go call. Uh, my April whip go was uh, 2,500 stitches on Kyrie and Sora, which I finished uh, the day before yesterday. And then uh, 2,250 on this boy, which I think I finished today because I was at like 2,100 yesterday. And I haven't counted yet today, but I've done all of his spine and all of this little bit and his shoulder blades. So there's that.
So I don't really have like a preset goal for the rest of the month. So I can kind of work on whatever I want. The other thing I've noticed about this um, glow-in-the-dark thread is that it gets really hard to manage closer to the end of this, the thread. So, like, I'm, I'm probably going to bury it and cut it very shortly, whereas I'd go quite a bit further with the, uh, with the regular cotton thread. <laughs> it says this thread looks like such a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, like it's not it's not the worst thing I can imagine worse it's it's better than using dollar store thread it tastes weird too thank you for that insight too I know exactly what you mean because like if you're licking it to get it through the the needle it tastes weird it just sounds like you're eating it like nudes um The dollar store, like, DMC knockoff thread, that's pretty terrible to use as well. Well, that's good. I'm going to definitely be able to finish this section and then move the frame and then do all the, vari the variegated before I need to cut more glow-in-the-dark. Um, I have more glow-in-the-dark. I just haven't cut it and bobbinated it. And I was worried I would have to do that in order to finish this little section. But it looks like we are going to be good. Hello, Bella. Welcome. Welcome to the stream, Bells. Are you going to come say hello to the peoples? Yeah. Look at the pretty girl. Do you snoof treats upon my fingers? No, we don't eat the needles. Yeah. You pretty girl? You smell treats? Okay, I give her treats. <laughs> Alright, Bella can have some treats in her gums. Thanks. Why do you have to stand directly on my frame every time? There you go, Bells. Bella, you got a ton of treats. Okay, we're just grooming father now. No, Binks, don't sit there. Binks, don't don't sit on dad. Daddy needs that. 
Banks. Banks. Father needs that. Look, look what Binks has done. Look at how concave this is now. Banks. All right. Bella, are you going to just stay here right, right there? Right in the corner of the screen? Voila. Who's your good little gummy girl? You're a pretty girl. Yeah. Bella is now sitting just beside me here. Oh, here she comes. She approves of Frog. Always be careful when you're crafting around cats that uh, you keep track of your rogue thread because we do not want anybody eating their something they're not supposed to. It says they have so much counting to do. Everyone lend, lend your fingers. All right. Start counting. We'll help. I will not shout out numbers. I promise. I find that's one of the benefits of doing a smaller piece with larger blocks of color for your first one. There is less counting involved. And it, and when you miscount, it's a little bit more obvious. Uh, so if you are looking for a beginner pattern, something on the smaller side with uh, fewer colors is definitely a good idea. I've been designing so much lately. Um, the designing bug has really gotten me. But as you know, I uh, I have some health issues, some joint problems, that kind of thing. And when I'm sitting here at this desk, using the mouse to design uh, in the, 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 the program, um, I can only do it for so long before it starts to get like really painful. So I have to take a bunch of breaks. But as I'm taking a break, I'm like staring at it being like, oh, I, I, I can just fix this one thing. I should just fix this one thing. So whenever I take a break, I have to like close the program, walk away. If I get an idea, I write it down for later. That's the reason that I can't really do mouse and keyboard games because I can only do so much mouse before it's just owie. Which is why Spirit City is great because I can set like a 
the, the timer is customizable. So I'll set like a 40 minute timer for designing rounds. Whereas usually I'd set a 50 or 60 minute timer. But I had a lot of fun. I um, I did a Phasmophobia sampler. So it's in the style of like a Quaker or a Prairie Schooler band sampler, um, which is a very like traditional, you'd know it if you saw it. It's got like the strips of letters and the strips of motifs, except it's a um, Phasmophobia one. I had a lot of fun putting that together. I might do more for other video games and things like that. I was thinking a uh, a Valorant Quaker would be fun. Because there's so many like little motifs I could put in. Bella's back. <laughs> Moon rushed back to her free stage to say eyes. Eyes for Valorant Quaker. Because some, um, did I just go offline? Okay. Sorry, I thought I thought Bella just jumped on something and made me stop streaming. Um okay. It's Bella Cuddle time now. Yeah, I think Valorant Quaker would be fun. Because some video games have a ton of uh cross stitch patterns available and some have absolutely none. Like you'll find so many Stardew patterns. And no phasmophobia patterns. Kingdom Hearts fairly well represented Pokemon puns. Um, but like Valorant, no patterns. Actually, no, that's a lie. I did see a couple of Valorant patterns when I was doing my initial market research. So Bella is right here. And she will remain there for as long as she wants. This is one of her, this is how we cuddle. She will lay here. She's got her chin tucked over my arm. And, uh, yeah, this is how we cuddle. She caught, she taught her to cuddle like this way back when we got the Wii. Oh yeah, that's right. You taught her to cuddle so we could play video games. <laughs> that's when you were just a little tiny kitten. Little tiny kitten, Bella.
Asha says they're adorable. Thank you. And Toot says, Bella and Gigi are the only ones who cuddle well while we're busy. Early's getting there. Early, Early is good when I'm knitting. She hasn't figured out how to cuddle when I'm cross-stitching. Um, but she can settle while I'm knitting and not move for hours. And yeah, Binks just never stays still, ever. Binks is a constant blur of motion. I don't... It's so rare for us to get a photo of Binks that isn't blurred because she just never stops moving. And if Pico ever does come to cuddle us, we drop everything to cuddle Pico because it happens so rarely. But like Bella and Early will come to cuddle me while I'm working on something. And if I'm knitting and watching TV or something, I won't even... I won't even really notice that they're there. Like, I'll notice that they're there, but it won't, like, twig in my mind that, like, oh, this is something I should take notice of. It's just like, oh, yes, I have a cat on me. This is normal. <laughs> it says Binks is ADHD if ADHD was a cat. Yeah, Binks really is my cat. Binks is a sweet cinnamon roll who screams constantly and... She, she needs to be loved, but she does not want to be picked up or held. You know how cats are like made of liquid, so when you pick them up, they kind of like bleh. But dogs are really super stiff when you pick them up and their legs kind of stick out. Binx is a dog. You, you pick her up and all of her limbs are stuck straight out, super stiff, and she just starts this really sustained scream like it's not it's not always super loud it's just sustained from the moment you pick her up until the moment you set her down Gigi is a plushie, yes. For me too. It's funny because Gigi is definitely the largest of our cats, but I also pick him up the least. Um, even though Pico is not a cuddly cat, I pick her up twice a day to give her medication. Um, so like I know what she fe like how much she weighs. Gigi is much heavier than Pico, and I always forget that until I've picked him up and it's like oof. Bella is always and forever a liquid. He, like he's not he's not chonky in that like he looks rotund unless He's sitting down and you look at his butt from behind. Um, and then he just kind of go. <laughs> uh, but he's just he's a he's a large, solid tomcat. Of course, we call him our chonky man. But not chonky, but built because he's a himbo. Yeah, he is a himbo. Toot says he chonks dances when he's decided it's nap time, and I disagree. 
Oh yeah, he's perfected the Chong stance. He will he will get a wide stance on him. If we take too long to go to bed, he will he will just be in the bed chonk stancing at us. He does a good take care. I'm surprised he didn't show up for tree eat. He must be sleeping hard somewhere. Or is he cuddling with you, Toot? Is cat's chonks dancing the equivalent of humans T-posing? Maybe. Maybe he is T-posing for dominance. He's M-posing for dominance? Oh, he's probably in Kitty City. Yeah, very true. Okay, bye, Bells. But yeah, it's so funny. I rarely get GG cuddles myself, but he is constantly cuddling with Toot. Change the vibes, knitting by the fireplace. We can do that. All right, let's uh, get the UI back on. Fireplace, we're gonna do some knitting. All right, so how's that for you, Moon? All right, let's see if this will work. GG. GG, baby boy. You have to come this way. Come here, GG. GG. There you go, Bella. I feed them, I swear. Gigi. Anyways, Gigi is now on the back of my chair. I'm trying to get him to come down, but he's being... Did you guys see that little pat-pat that I just got? Um, Gigi's being difficult. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that you saw Bella's little paw. No, no more treats for Bella. You <laughs> go.
I know. Toot says she's saying, Father, Father, please. Father, I'm so small. Father, please, I'm starving. Mella, I gave you wet food this morning. You've had dry food available to you all day. You got treats this morning. You've had three rounds of treats this afternoon. And you're going to get wet food in 40 minutes. Mother did not forget your treats. Mother did not abandon you. Father did your treats this morning. What are we going to do with these? These dorks. Loves of my life. Of course, Bella has no memory of being fed treats by father this morning. More treats must be given. Here is only treats. 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 Yeah. <sighs> Gigi is now currently sitting beside me. And is still refusing to be on camera. Toot says, it's a real testament to the lasting effects of trauma. She was feral for two or three months at most, but 15 years later, she's still so food insecure. Yeah, that's very true. Um, she was feral when she was a kitten before she was rescued, but we, we adopted her when she was only four or five months old. Um, and obviously she's been well fed since then. Um, but yeah, she's been food aggressive and food insecure since she's a kitten. Moon says, we think Yuna's anxiety is rooted in her trauma, too, with her being separated from her mother and sibling in five weeks. Yeah, that's that's hard. I mean, I think I think that definitely has a lasting effect on animals. Um, because even I mean, we we adopted Pico when she was about six months old and whatever happened to her in those six months it took her years to trust and get over that. Like, I'd say we probably had her for a decade, a, a decade, a decade um, before she let us pick her up and hold her or came to us for cuddles. And yeah, we take care of our babies now. They're in good, they're in a good home. This has actually been the perfect project to work on while streaming because I don't need to refer to a pattern and I don't really need to think about it all that much. I'm just filling in this big, wide, empty space. I just have to remember to do this little bit here. I'm, I know I'm going to forget before I move the frame. So like every few minutes, I'm like, okay, remember to do that little white space. I mean, I could just hop over and do it now, but 
I'm not going to. For some reason. Moon's Coffee Bob has become a travel work project for that reason. Oh, yeah, because you're just on the, the filling in bits of the final stretch, right? You don't have very long to go at all. Yeah, almost the cup is all filling. Nice. We'll have to refer to the pattern for the steam. Yeah. Yeah, but hopefully you can get that done in one or two sittings. That piece looks so good. It's also much larger than I thought it was. If you want to see pictures of what people are working on um, and want to share what you're working on, the best place to do that is definitely in the Discord server. Um, we do have a Discord server, the Cozy Hide. And uh, yeah, actually, if you watch this past week's um, Cozy Cast, <laughs> thank you for the Discord command, Moon. Um, if you watch this past week's Cozy Cast that came out two days ago, um, I actually featured some of our community members' work that they had shared in the Discord. Um, so if you want to talk more about crafting, talk more about games, animals, um, life, all that good stuff, the Discord is definitely the place to do that in. It says these streams and chatting with you and Moon has made me realize how regimented and autistic I am. I can't imagine doing an outline and then just filling in you just straight lines and only straight lines. Yeah, you would have uh you would have not enjoyed the process of doing the outlining on the frog. Because there was a lot of non-linear stitching. So that's one thing that I like about streaming and creating videos um, is that you get exposed to different styles, not just different styles of pattern, but different styles of working, um, different styles of organizing your projects, organizing information, organizing your supplies, um, just different styles of crafting in general. And it's so, it's so interesting. So um, if you, if you have not checked out the YouTube, um, I do... I mean, of course, recommend that you jump over there and follow on YouTube because please follow on YouTube. Um, subscribe on YouTube. It's called subscribing on YouTube. Yep. Um, I post crafting videos there as well as uh, the VODs from these streams um, will be up because uh, I'm, I'm dual streaming on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, so the VODs of the stream go up immediately. Um, so yeah, you can do that. Uh, we also, I've been talking a lot about the Etsy store. You can check out the Etsy store. Um, Toot is going to throw up all kinds of links right now. Uh, if you want to check out the, you can find me on Discord. Discord is the best way to get it in touch with me. Um, I've got videos on YouTube. I've got videos on TikTok. I don't really post that much on Instagram, but it's in the link tree. Um, if you check out the link tree, you will see the Etsy, the Kofi, all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, just, uh, go check out all of the links. Um, super appreciate you. Uh, I think we are going to get wrapped up. We've been going for a couple of hours now. So what's coming up, uh, Sunday, you will find me hanging out with Moonfaced, uh, for, uh, Sunday Stardew. Monday, we are going to be having another crafty chat. Probably going to be cross-stitch. Probably going to be listening to some Spirit City Lo-Fi. Um, and then Friday is going to be the big special stream 
So definitely mark your calendars for Friday, April 19th. I will be releasing the schedule in the Discord on the Instagram, and I'll also be doing an announcement on YouTube. So hopefully one of those things will get to you and uh, you'll be able to join us on Friday for that big stream. There's lots of giveaways. Um, we're going to be hanging out, doing some cross-stitching. It's going to be so much fun. Um, Wednesday, there is going to be another video going up. It's going to be a uh, project vlog for the emotional support chicken. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed <laughs> that I can get it out in time. Uh, but uh, so check out the YouTube that'll go up on Wednesday. And yeah, just thank you everybody so much for coming out tonight and joining us. Um, and uh, just I had so much fun. I love these cozy chill streams with you guys. Um, so 24 hours of cross stitch next weekend. Very exciting. All right, so uh, with that, all that being said, we're going to say goodbye to YouTube. Everybody on Twitch, say goodbye to YouTube. Everybody on YouTube, say goodbye to Twitch. Goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye, goodbye. I will see you in the Discord. I'll see you in Twitch. I'll see you in the Etsy. And as always, I will see you in my heart. All right. Bye, YouTube.